From a thousand heights, the streams of life are ever rushing down. The jutting rock, the broken bough, the crooked bank, even the rounded pebble, each and all, in their personal murmurs, are enough to trouble these shallow waters and obstruct their narrow course. You know, the past month, especially the last few weeks, as I've uh, listened to uh, various messages from, from different people I listen to, uh, read comments, uh, prognostications for the short and near term, near term future and the long distant future, and pretty much everywhere, everywhere I look, I hear anger, consternation, worry, even some fear. I hear a lot of frustration, a lot of comments of what people will do and won't do. It seems that a great divide has come across this land we live in and few of us are certain how to deal with it. Few of us are certain what it portends for us, for our children, for the way of life we've come to know. I hear this, this agitation in the spirit and I can sense it as I read comments, uh, part of my gifting in in the service of the Lord is that as I read people's words, I get a, a feel and a sense of their emotion and their spiritual state of being. And it seems that uh, a great pall and a pause has come across large parts of the body of Christ. But my friends, as we look at events that we see coming, I must tell you, there is an antidote to the coming darkness that we can feel and see closing in around us. God has not left us without strength and without the gifts of his presence. And if you look around you, and many of you who listen to me regularly know I spend a great deal of time outside and I get out and I wander around and I enjoy the beauty of God's creation. But you see, God's creation is more than just a thing of beauty. Throughout God's creation, we see spread before us proof of the promises and the love and the power in Almighty God. I know I am probably more of a mystic in the sense that I, I see God and, and God's provision and God's plans all around me as a daily physical and spiritual part of my life. I can't get away from it. And a part of what I try to do here is to express this unto you so that your joy, your strength, and your peace might always be full. But as I am thinking about God's provision for us this day, I, I tell you, I see an example everywhere, and a prime example I want to talk to you today about. I see it every day, out in my garden during the summer and spring months. Those of you who live in warmer climates can walk outside and observe it right now. What is this example of God's provision, my friends? It's the humble bee. A bee, you say, yes. As I said, all of creation, the word tells us, is an example and a teaching lesson for us in how we are to traverse this world and retain our relationship 
with the living God. Those of you who ever sit around and watch will notice how some bees kind of buzz about and they flitter from flower to flower. And yet there are other bees who don't spend so much time flitting. But what they do is they land on a flower and they go deep inside and they kind of wallow around in it and they get themselves all covered with the pollen. And they only go to maybe a few flowers before you see them fly off because they're so loaded they couldn't fly if they didn't go now. Whereas other bees, they kind of just seem to fly and hover around and stay all day. Now I know most of you probably don't get out and have much chance to look at this, but I enjoy my garden. I sometimes can sit out there for hours in the warm weather and watch the hummingbirds and the bees and the other critters. But back to the bee. You see, my friend, it's not the mere touching of the flower by the bee which gathers the precious nectar they need to survive. But it is his abiding for a time within the heart of the flower which draws out the sweetness he craves. Oh my friends, it is not the bee who visits the most flowers who succeeds in his mission, but the one who is most fully enveloped within the flowers he touches. My friends, let your hearts dwell within the living truth as the bee does upon the flower. Let the outer world go. Forget it exists for a time with the risen, risen Savior. Envelop yourself in the gifts and the provision that our Father has provided. Only as we abide in Him, our risen Lord, partake of Him. Feast on Him. Commune with Him. Walk with Him. All of these words, only as we partake of Him in this way, will He produce within us the divine honey of His living peace. His peace. His heavenly peace is the divine antidote, my friends, to all the darkness we see. All the darkness that tries us and attacks us, all that we fear, may be coming upon us. His peace, my friends, is a spiritual flower of light that will illumine your spirit and guide your path. It is a transforming gift, believe me, my friends, and it will metamorphose your soul. My peace I give unto you. These were the words of our Lord. And they're more than just words. If you remember the circumstances in which these words were given, they gain immensely in their significance. When we put them into their surroundings, his promise, his offer of peace shines out, my friends, like a, like a brilliant diamond against this empty sky. It is and becomes all-encompassing. When the Lord spoke these words, he was not resting in a quiet house, for instance, at the home of Peter or Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. No, the air around him at that time was thick, thick, thick with treachery and betrayal and intrigue. Rumors and accusations had been thrown and the betrayer Judas had already gone out and was even now engaged in his dark mission of deceit and betrayal. Our Lord's crucifixion was not 24 hours away. His enemies were as right now, at the very gate. And it was in these circumstances, in times as stormy and turbulent as anything we are likely to ever face, 
that our Lord quietly claimed to be in possession of a deep and mysterious peace. How could this be, you say? And I tell you, it's because our Lord was connected through His Spirit, through His whole being to the living God. And as so, He knew that all things were already accomplished. He understood that He merely had to pass through the fire. And however terrifying that might have been, His peace was based on the fact that He knew, loved, and trusted the living God. And that He knew all things had already been accomplished that all would be well. This is the source of his peace. My peace I leave with you. The form of speech that he used was a customary salutation. You hear people saying it all the time. Peace, peace brother. They use it the way we say hello. And in their words there is really very little caring or communication of the essence and nature of real peace. It's just a greeting. It goes no deeper than that. Any sanctity in the thought or words of peace is lost because it is a mere salutation and it has become for many people a, a simple form of life, an icebreaker, a way to crash the silence and start a conversation. However, our Lord's injunction was different. It is intended to demonstrate and renew and enrich the heart of all who were able to receive his words. The conventional speech was merely ceremonial. Our Lord's words, my friends, were a gift, a gift of vital, loving grace to each of us individually, and to all of us collectively. When he said peace, it was not a benediction of empty words. There was something accomplished and finished and quite real behind it, my friends. It was something to be done in our lives, not a mere salutation. As our Lord himself said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. You see, my friends, Christ's peace is not just a surface coating like we put syrup over the top of our pancakes. Christ's peace is of a penetrating nature. It pierces and winds itself into every corner and chink of our beings into our thoughts, our lives, our words, our everyday works and everything we do. It will thread itself into our understanding to enlighten them, into our judgments to quiet and calm them, into our wills to strengthen them, into our consciences to renew them, and into our lives to empower them, my friends. In fact, if we look at the new man of grace, any lamb, take any lamb within the flock, and we shall see that all of his members and faculties are formed and adapted to a living reception of this peace. As his eyes adapted to light, the ear to sound, the lungs to air and the heart to the blood which keeps his life alive. So is the new man of grace, fully fitted and adapted to live, breathe and have our very being within the living peace and truth of Almighty God. So there you have it, my friends, the words of God the words of our living master, the witness of the apostles, and of every lamb across the centuries will tell us that the peace, the peace of the living God that he sheds freely within our hearts is the antidote for 
all that the world can throw about us. For the peace of God gives us strength and it gives us the power to stand. As I begin to leave today, and it's early Friday morning, you can probably hear a slight echo. I'm at my shop, so I guess this qualifies as on the road. I have one delivery I wasn't able to get to before Thanksgiving, and I'm getting ready to take it out now. But as I leave you, my friends, I want to go through just a few scriptures, and the Bible has, oh, many, many, many more than I could possibly read tonight on the peace of Almighty God. Let me leave you with these. From the book of Psalms. I will hear what God Jehovah will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints. Great peace have they that love thy law, and they have no occasion of stumbling. In Isaiah. Thou wilt keep him of per in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. And the work of righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of righteousness, quietness and confidence forever. And finally, my friend, two verses from the book of John. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. These things have I spoken unto you, that you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Oh, my friends, learn to incorporate these words within to your daily walk. Make them a part of your daily feeding on the Lord. And I leave you now with his words. My peace I give unto you. Hello again, my friends. This is Kanita back with you uh, one more time just to close this out I'm back at the house now back with uh, I've got four grandkids here at the house you can probably hear them out there playing in the other room they're uh, playing games out there while I'm trying to finish this up here and then we'll go and get something to eat I guess before I go I did want to talk about the music tonight as always the music we play on the show is uh, from Zeph and Trish Daniel and I'd like to thank them for the use of their music we open tonight with Do You Get It also tonight, you'll hear Sunrise in 432 hertz. I better put that down. <laughs> and we'll close the program with Morning Wake. Until the next time, my friends, have a wonderful, wonderful day in the Lord. Goodbye.